feel like I just stumbled upon an AO3 mystery. Oh, Jello shots. This is an integral part of the story. 15 million hits. Great googly moogly. Clint is a brony. What? What in God's name happened here? Almost 50,000 comments. Dilf Draco Malfoy. That's how you know your fic made it big when people want to do fanfics of your fanfiction. <laughs> There are over 13 million fanfics across nearly 70,000 fandoms on the popular fanfiction website Archive of Our Own, aka AO3. That's a lot of fanfiction, and chances are, if you're a regular fic reader yourself, then there's likely been a handful of fanfics from your fandoms where most people have either read them, heard of them, or at the very least have seen them in passing. But out of all those millions of works and thousands of fandoms, which ones are the most popular overall? What are AO3's top dogs, so to speak? Well, that's what we're gonna take a look at today. There's a few different ways we can gauge popularity of fanfics on AO3. There's kudos, hits, bookmarks, and comments. Kudos determines how many times a fanfic has been liked, basically. There's a little button at the bottom of every work on AO3 where you click it and you give the author kudos. And you can only kudos a work once, regardless if there's multiple chapters or if it's completed or not. Hits refer to how many times a fanfic has been clicked on, basically how many times a work has been accessed. So let's say you have a favorite fanfic and you've read it once a day for 12 days in a row. You've given that fic, 12 hits. Granted, if you were to click on a fanfic like 12 times in a 24 hour period on like your phone, then it would only register as one hit because of your IP address. Bookmarks determine how many times a work has been bookmarked by other AO3 users. Unlike kudos, hits, and even comments, only other AO3 users can bookmark fanfics. And they're an indication of stories that AO3 users want to either save read later, or share with other people. And finally, there's comments, which is literally just how many times has a work been commented on. I do want to make it abundantly clear that all of these numbers have nothing to do with a fix quality. Quantity does not equal quality here. I sometimes see people doing crazy numbers to try to figure out, okay, what's my hits to kudos ratio? Or like, how many comments am I getting per bookmark? And I have to wonder, why? Like, it's not really telling you anything accurately. There's no algorithm. People aren't getting paid for this. There's really no point in trying to figure out these engagement numbers unless it's like really personally satisfying to you. But again, they're not really accurate. So what is the point? I really don't see the fun of turning writing and reading fix into a numbers game, you know? I thought y'all were reading fic to get away from math. A fanfic can have a high number of kudos, hits, bookmarks, or comments for a variety of different reasons. At the end of the day, if you're only sorting by hits and kudos on a daily basis to find fix to read, you're really robbing yourself of a lot of great potential fix out there that are just being posted. It's a great place to start if you're in a new fandom and you want to see what fix are staples in that community, but you shouldn't stop there. There is also the question of, okay, but even sorting through all these different categories, is it really going to change the fix that show up all that much? That's what we're going to find out here. Hits and kudos are going to be pretty closely linked, <laughs> but as for bookmarks and comments, Maybe not so much. There are 20 fanfics per page on AO3, and so this is gonna be the first page of searching. I am quite curious as to what fanfics come up when you sort the entire website through kudos, hits, bookmarks, and comments. Because when you're on AO3, you don't really veer away from the fandoms you're reading for, unless you're curious about what's happening in other fandoms or AO3 as a whole, which, I am. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the top 20 fanfics on AO3. If you're not terribly familiar with using AO3, then you might be thinking, how are you searching and finding these top fics in the first place? Because everything is sorted into nice little boxes with fandoms and tags, right? Well, that's just the thing. You're not using any of them. So all you gotta do is just go to the search bar and hit search. You're going to see that there are over 13 million results. You go to edit search, and then you're gonna find this kind of complicated looking form here. We're not gonna do anything fancy. We're gonna scroll to the bottom past these other sections to search and then sort by either hits, kudos, comments, or bookmarks. And this is gonna search through the entirety of AO3 for whatever we're sorting by. Let's go ahead and start this off by sorting by kudos first. So the top kudos fanfic on AO3 sitting at over 228,000 kudos is all the young dudes by Miss King Bean 89. 
This is a Marauders fic. It's a subsect of the Harry Potter fandom, and the main pairing is Wolfstar, which is Sirius Black and Remus Lupin, with James Potter and Lily Evans Potter as a side pairing. It's got 188 chapters, and the word count is over 526,000, which is nearly the length of Les Miserables. Long fic charting the Marauders time at Hogwarts and beyond from Remus's point of view, diversion from canon in that Remus's father died and he was raised in a children's home, and is a bit rough around the edges, otherwise canon compliant, 1971 to 1995. Wolfstar is incredibly slow burn, literally years long buildup of worth it, I promise. And please do not copy to Wattpad. Yeah, cross posting could be a big problem for some of the bigger fix that aren't on both platforms. I have heard many a tale of this fanfic and honestly, I'm gonna try to do like a progress vlog of me reading it. I don't know when that would come out, but it's a project I'd like to tackle. At some point because I do really want to read this. I want to see what the fuss and the hullabaloo is about. And talking to other fans, it's pretty much considered a required reading if you're in the Marauders fandom yourself. Whew, it's going to be quite the trek reading this. Our next fic sitting at over 153,000 kudos is I Am Groot by Sherlock Smith. This used to be the top kudos fic on AO3 before all the young dudes surpassed it. And I did read this once upon a time ago for a gag on the channel, which was fun. If you don't know what this fic is, basically it's a harrowing tale told from Groot's perspective from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, the entire thing is just, I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot! Here poetry. Our next fic, sitting at over 96,000 kudos, is Manacled by Senling Yu. This is a Dramini fic, Hermione Granger and Draco Malfoy, and is very reminiscent of A Handmaiden's Tale. Harry Potter is dead, in the aftermath of the war, in order to strengthen the might of the magical world, Voldemort enacts a repopulation effort. Hermione Granger has an order secret, lost but hidden in her mind. So she is sent as an enslaved surrogate to the High Reef until her mind can be cracked. To my knowledge, Manacled is going to be turned into an original work of fiction by the author in the near future, so if slash when that happens, it'll be pulled from AO3. This fic was a big target of the bookbinding drama that happened not too long ago, where a lot of people were taking this fic, binding it, and then selling it on places like TikTok Shop and Etsy, basically trying to profit off of a fic that A, they shouldn't be selling in the first place, and B, they didn't even write. The next fic is sitting at over 90,000 kudos, and it's Yesterday Upon the Stair by Pit Viper of Doom. I did read this one back in the day when I was more into My Hero, and I do like Pit Viper of Doom's other fics as well. Their Tododeku ones are super cute. But yeah, this one's a gen fic, there's no romance. Midoriya Izuku has always been written off as weird, as if it's not bad enough to be the quirkless weakling, he has to be the weird quirkless weakling on top of it. But truthfully, the weird part is the only part that's accurate. He's determined not to be the weakling, and in spite of what it says on paper, he's not actually quirkless. Even before meeting All Might and taking on the power of All for One, Izuku isn't quirkless. Not that anyone would believe it if he told them. Izuku sees dead people. Yeah, besides I Am Groot, these fix are pretty chunky. Like the word count for Manacold is almost 400,000. And then Yesterday Upon the Stair is over 420,000. Juicy stuff, juicy stuff. The next fix sitting just shy of 90,000 kudos is Passerine by Blue Jamas. This is also our first locked fic here, which means that you need an AO3 account if you want to read it and access it. Sometimes authors lock their fix for privacy reasons, or they're afraid of it being scraped for AI purposes, or they didn't expect it to get as much attention as it did, and so they just want to keep it more on the down low. This is a dream SMP fic and was one of the fics to read for the fandom not too long ago. There's no romantic pairings, it's all platonic. I understand, you heard the place you loved was in trouble, so you came back, but I don't, I just, why didn't you take me? Here it was, at last, catharsis, or something close to it. I would have hunted them down with you, Filza, the people who did that to your town. I would have given you your vengeance on a silver platter. I would have given you the world. Filza didn't look guilty. He just looked tired. I didn't hunt them down, though. Or that fic where Techno and Phil are old immortals, and Tommy and Wilbur are decidedly not. I've heard a lot of really good things about this fanfic, and if you look at it as like its own contained thing with these people being characters, then yeah, I was curious and was gonna try to give it a shot at some point, but with all the stuff that's happened with the various Minecraft YouTubers, 
I don't know. Our next fanfic is sitting roughly at around 84,000 kudos, and it's Let's Get These Teen Hearts Beating Faster Faster by Luna Rinney. This one is also locked, and it's for the Death in Venice fandom. Huh, I am not familiar with it. That title is taken from Panic at the Disco, though. <laughs> Our next fanfic sitting at just short of 81,000 kudos is In Another Life by Little Lux Ray. This one I have read, and while it's not a favorite of mine, it did make me tear up a bit. It's a haiku fic for the pairing Boku Aka, which is Akashi, and Bokuto. And yeah, that major character death definitely hurt. And the Cloud Atlas references too, man. It's funny because I knew Little Lux Ray for their BTS Vampire AU art, and I only found out later that they wrote this fic, and I was like, whoa, what the heck? The next fanfic is sitting at just over 70,000 kudos, and it's Dark Matter by Mystery Cyclone. It's an MCU and DCU crossover fic, and by the looks of things, there's no romantic pairing, so it's also a gen fic. <gasps> Peter Parker Wump. Ooh. And it was just completed this June, too! The last thing Peter sees is Tony's horrified, heartbroken expression leaning over him. The guilt in his eyes is almost worse than the burning pain that's taking Peter apart piece by piece. The world starts to go dark. There's a flash of gold and green. For one moment, he finds himself standing amongst the Guardians and others. And then, darkness again. It feels like blinking, an extended period of nothingness that ends as abruptly as it begins. One moment there's nothing, the next there's light. Easy, a woman says. Her words are gentle and carry a slight accent that he can't place. I'm called Wonder Woman. What's your name? Eehee <laughs> So I read a lot of DC fix, and this one always comes up as like up there. So I have yet to read it, but it's been on my to read list for a while. I do want to read it. It's just my to read list is currently like about 300 fix long. So. The premise is intriguing though, wherein Peter accidentally steals the soul stone with several interesting consequences to follow. Ugh. The next fix sitting at over 69,000 kudos is Then Comes a Mist and a Weeping Rain by Faith Wood. It's a dreary fic from Harry Potter. It always rains for Draco Malfoy, metaphorically and literally ever since he had accidentally conjured a cloud, a cloud that's ever so cross. Post Deathly Hollow, so it's kind of like, I guess, romance after the series ends. Yeah, I have heard of this one too, but again, I just haven't read it before. This might be the oldest fic we've come across so far, actually, because it was posted in 2011. Yeah, it is, damn. The next fanfic is sitting at over 65,000 kudos. It's Hero Class Civil Warfare by Rogue Druid. It's a My Hero Academia fic with no romantic pairings as far as I see, so it's also a gen fic. Oh, it's a villain Deku fic, okay. The sewer level always sucks. Heroes led by Bakugo, villains led by Midoriya. Seven days prep time, three days for Izuku Midoriya to show why they should be glad he's not a real villain. Ooh! Backstabbing double agents who don't know they are double agents. Hmm. Explosions, paintball, the teachers were not prepared. This is a really cool premise, so he's not actually a villain, but he's role-playing as one for some class 1A business. This next fic is also sitting at over 65,000 kudos, which, oh sh less than 100 kudos behind Hero Class Civil Warfare, so they may end up playing musical chairs soon. It's Draco Malfoy and the Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love by Is This Self-Care. Eroticized arithmancy, Crookshanks will fight God or become him, human on mushroom violence, and Schrodinger's ethics. Quite the collection there. Hermione straddles the muggle and magical worlds as a medical researcher and healer about to make a big discovery. Draco is an Auror assigned to protect her from forces unknown, to both of their displeasure. Features hyper-competent, fiery Hermione, and lazy yet dangerous Draco. Slow burn. Mm. And I do believe this fic was also a big target of the bookbinding that happened as well. Scandalous ankle touching, oh my. This next fanfic is nearly at 65,000 kudos, and it's Deku, I think he's some pro, by Clouds. It's a My Hero Academia fic, and for pairings, we've got Eraser Joke, which is Eraserhead and Miss Joke, which I think is personally cute, as well as Bakugo X Consequences, my favorite, and Kiribaku, Kirishima, and Bakugo. And there's also Midoriya and Ururaka, as well as everyone X Therapy. Nice. Yaki Toshinori watched the green-haired boy walk away after saving his friend and shook his head. While the boy's actions were heroic, he was just too reckless. 
he walked in the opposite direction, thinking about a time he could meet the candidate Sir Nairai put forward. Izuku Midoriya goes home and decides that, even if he can't be a hero himself, he can still help them with his analysis. Cue Izuku catching the attention of multiple heroes who are a little more open-minded and willing to see the potential in a quirkless kid. Back when I was reading a lot of my hero fix, this one was always up there, and I believe I read some of it, but I don't remember where I left off, so maybe I'll go back and reread it at some point. The next fic is sitting at over 64,000 kudos, and it looks like it's only 200 kudos-ish shy of catching up to Deku, I think he's some pro. It's Tommy and its Clinic for Supervillains by Bones and the Bees. It's for the Dream SMP fandom, and it's a gen fic, so no romantic relationships, or how Tommy, who is not a hero or a villain, or even a vigilante, saves the life of one of Lamanberg's most feared supervillains and accidentally ends up becoming the resident doctor for every supervillain in town, and maybe gets a family along the way too. I really enjoyed this premise when I heard about it for the first time, and I didn't get to read it unfortunately, so it's kind of like in that weird zone where like, I want to read it, but I'm not sure if I should or will, so we'll see. This next fanfic is sitting at just over 64,000 kudos, and it's Count Your Blessings, Not Your Flaws by Pit Viper of Doom, again. Midoriya Izuku has never been asked out, confessed to, or flirted with, except as a joke. Usually Todoroki's the one whose past gets in the way of his happiness, but now it's Midoriya's turn. This one I have read, it's actually in my fic recommendation list because it's cute, it's sweet, kind of wumpy, and yeah, I enjoyed it during my Todoroki era. Well done, Pit Viper of Doom, for being on here twice. The next fanfic has over 63,000 kudos. It's Viridian, The Green Guide by Clouds. It is the sequel to Deku, I Think He's Some Pro, which we literally saw two fix ago. Well done, Clouds. This one does have romantic pairings. It's Bakugo Katsuki x Redemption, Kaminari Denki x Midoriya Izuku, and Bakugo Katsuki and Ururaka Ochako. After his dream is finally crushed, Izuku isn't quite sure there's anything left for him to live for, but he can't exactly kill himself either, not without hurting the people he cares the most about. So when he realizes that the Quirkless can't technically be vigilantes, it seems like the best of both worlds. He'll be able to save people even without being a hero, and if he happens to die while he's at it, well, like Kachan said, maybe he'd be born with the Quirk in his next life. <sighs> Punt Endeavor into the sun, yes. Ooh, over 120 chapters too, wow. The next fanfic sitting at over 63,000 kudos is a Raylo fic by Treasy. So this was pretty up there in the top fics for a while, and you'll notice it only has 12 words. When you click on it, Ray picks up Kylo and dunks him into the garbage obliterated. Ray is a lesbian and this ship sucks. With Stan Luna as one of the additional tags. Classy. I think it was one of the first fics that dropped after The Force Awakens as well. Whether you like or dislike Raylo, the fact that this is here when there's all these other fics that have so much effort and love put into them, it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least I am Groot was tasteful, you know? <laughs> That's just me, though. The next fanfic, sitting at just over 63,000 kudos, is Evitative by V-Chan. It's another dreary fic, and also an alternate Hogwarts house sorting fic. In the summer before his fifth year at Hogwarts, Harry is drawn to a room in Grimald Place. Like the Gryffindor he is, he enters the room without fear. The room is a library, and Harry is surprised to find that he's eager to learn. Then he gets the bad news. He's been accidentally expelled from Hogwarts, and he needs to be sorted again. Everyone is confident that he'll go back to Gryffindor, but with what he's been learning, Harry's not so sure. Oh, so Harry Potter is a Slytherin now. I like the premise, it's interesting. The next fanfic is sitting at just over 62,000 kudos, and it's Salvage by Muffin Lance. It's an Avatar The Last Airbender fic. I was not expecting to see that here, and it's the platonic relationship between Hakoda and Zuko. Zuko and responsible adult role models? Oh! Hakoda just wants to talk terms, Ozai just wants a convenient barbarian to off his son, in a politically expedient manner. They are having a minor disagreement on fatherhood. Zuko is an awkward turtle dog. Mid-season one, Zuko is held for ransom by Chief Hakoda. Ozai's replies to the Water Tribe's demands are A-plus parenting. Hakoda is deeply concerned for this son that isn't his, 
and who might be safer among enemies than with his own father. I really like this. Oh my god, I'm definitely adding this to my to read list. Holy sh! That is so sweet. Ah, oh, there's a pod fic too. I can listen to it. Salvage. Oh, like Okoto is salvaging Zuko from the ruins of. Ozai's A plus parenting. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I've been wanting a good genfic to read recently. I say, like I haven't been reading a shit ton of pet fam genfics. The next fanfic is sitting at over 59,000 kudos and it's Crimson Rivers by Bizarre Stars. This one is a locked fic and it's for the Marauders fandom. The main pairings are Jeculus, which is Regulus Black and James Potter, as well as Wolfstar, Sirius Black and Ramus Lupin. Oh, I have heard a fair amount about this fic. <laughs> it's a Hunger Games-esque AU. Regulus Black was 15 the first time his name was called at a reaping. He's 25 when it happens to him again. A lot has changed in that time, and one of them is that he's ready to do whatever it takes to make it home. Nothing or no one will stop him, not even James Potter. James Potter has no plans to stop Regulus Black from making it home. In fact, his plans revolve around the opposite. He has his reasons, but he's made his choice to get Regulus out of the arena, even knowing it'll be the last thing he ever does. Sirius Black was 16 when he volunteered to take his little brother's place in the arena. At 26, without the option to do it again, he has no choice but to be a mentor to his brother and best friend, knowing that only one of them can make it back out. Two names called a mentor on the verge of falling apart, and more secrets and grief between all of them than they know how to handle. None of them are prepared for what happens next or how far they'll go to make it through. Man, yet another fic that has been fanbound a lot. People will die, be warned. It's a Hunger Games AU, so there's really no way around that. Sorry, but rest assured that no one who gets a POV will die. Ooh, okay, okay, good to know. Also would like to do a fic reading vlog for this fic in addition to all the young dudes, so stick around maybe for that. And finally, to wrap up the top 20 most kudos to fics on on AO3, sitting at over 59,000 kudos, about 500 kudos shy of Crimson Rivers, it's The Standard You Walk by Baffling Haze. It's another dreary fic, with minor one miney as well. With a pod fic available, let's go! On returning to Hogwarts for their eighth year, Headmistress McGonagall decided to room Draco Malfoy and Harry Potter together. She may have hoped for a leading example of house unity, the other students fully expected insults and fights, but nothing happened. That was until Harry sleepwalked into Draco's bed. Okay, now let's go ahead and sort by hits. Again, I'm predicting that at least most of the fix we just saw will also show up here. Maybe the order will be switched here and there, but maybe there'll be a few surprises. I don't know. Oh, we've got all the young dudes again in first place at over 15 million hits. Jesus, that's a popular fanfic. But now Manacled is our next fic at almost 9 million hits. Damn. That's a lot! Crimson Rivers is next at over 4,600,000 hits, but this next fic is a new one. It's sitting at over 3,500,000 hits and is called The Breeding Ground by Megamat09. It's a Harry Potter fic with lots of different pairings here, and some of them are definitely making me raise my eyebrows a bit. A long running anthology featuring Harry Potter with various women in sexual situations starting in 2015. All old chapters post as of December 9th, 2023, also including MILFs of May and Daughters of Potter. No more requests and suggestions. Damn. And there's over a thousand chapters. Holy f it is an anthology, so um, lots and lots of different little one shots here. God damn, wow. Next up, we've got Passerine, Yesterday Upon the Stair, and Draco Malfoy and the mortifying ordeal of being in love again, all sitting at over 3 million hits. But this next fic is a new one. It has over 3 million hits and is Lily's Boy by Somewhere's Sword. It's a dreary fic and it's also Ramus Lupin and Severus Snape. Huh. Neville Longbottom and Ginny Weasley and Sirius Black and Charlie Weasley. I'm not super familiar with the Ramus Severus and the Sirius Charlie pairings. Before his third year of Hogwarts has even begun, Harry faces three whole weeks of unsupervised time in Diagon Alley. In that time, he takes a trip to Gringotts, and that changes everything. Burdened with the knowledge that Dumbledore has been blocking his family magic and manipulating far more than he ever thought possible, Harry doesn't know who he can trust, but he knows he can't keep going that way. There's a whole world of lore and politics and history to catch up on, and the more he learns, 
the more Harry realizes his true place in the world and how much is being kept hidden from him. All the while, Dumbledore's twinkling eyes are constantly watching and Harry can't let on how much he knows. With help from unexpected places, Harry starts on a journey to end the war and reshape the wizarding world. With how much he looks like James Potter, people have forgotten one important thing about him. He is Lily Evans' son, and she was one hell of a witch. Not Molly, Ron, Hermione friendly. Interesting. This is certainly different from a lot of other Harry Potter premises I've heard before. Next up, we've got In Another Life with over 2,900,000 hits. And this next fic is also a new one. It's at over 2,800,000 hits and is called Measure of a Man by in a day's 22. To truly know someone is to differentiate between who they once were, who they are now, and who they're capable of being. Hermione realizes the duality of one man as she rectifies what she knows of the past and begins to understand the pieces of who Draco Malfoy is now, a father, a son, and a man. Cottagecore Hermione, Witterer Draco, Dilf Draco Malfoy, and past Hermione and Ron. I like the premise of this one, like finding love again. After that, we've got Viridian the Green Guide again at over 2,600,000 hits, and yet another new fic here, this one at just shy of 2,600,000 hits, and is Survival is a Talent by Shauna Storyteller. Yet another dreary fic as well. In the middle of their second year, Draco and Harry discover their soulmates and do their best to keep it a secret from everyone. Their best isn't perfect. Are you trying to get killed, Potter? Malfoy drawls, stalking forward. Quick as a serpent himself, he reaches out and grabs the snake just below the head. It thrashes in his grip, but is no longer able to bite anyone. This is a poisonous snake, and I doubt anyone brought a bazaar with them. Harry glares. He opens his mouth and feels the beginning of the snake's language pass his lips. And this isn't what he wants. What's the point of insulting Malfoy if he can't understand him? Malfoy's eyes widen. He slaps his hand over Harry's mouth. Potter, what the hell? Slytherins and Gryffindors being reluctant friends. And this one is actually still ongoing. Oh my god, and it's already sitting at over 530,000 words. Damn. Next up, we've got another new fic. This one is just over 2,500,000 hits and is The Auction by Love's Bitka 8. This one's another Dramini fic, and by the looks of it, it's in a similar wavelength to Manacold. In the wake of the Dark Lord's triumph over Harry Potter, the defeated must learn their new place. Hermione Granger, former Golden Girl, has been captured and reduced to human chattel, sold to the highest bidder as the top prize at an auction of order members and sympathizers. She is thrust into the rabid waiting hands of the Death Eaters, but despite the horrors of Voldemort's new world, Help and hope seem to arise from the most unlikely of places. I wonder if this one was also a big target of the book binding as well. After that is Deku, I think he's some pro, and Dark Matter again, both of which sitting at around 2,500,000 hits. And then we have another new fanfic here, but unfortunately, I don't know what fandom this is from because it's all in Chinese. After that is another new fanfic, this one sitting at over 2,300,000 hits, and is Choices by Matt. Moon. It is a Jekyllus, Wolfstar, and Jilly fic, as well as minor Marlene McKinnon and Dorcas Meadows. Jello shots. This is an integral part of the story. People make mistakes, but they also make choices. It's important to James that difference. He does his best not to confuse the two. After that is another new fic, this one sitting at over 2,300,000 hits, and is Fiction Ficlets by West or East. There are a lot of different fandoms tagged here, and yeah, it looks to be a a collection of ficlets from prompts people send in. There's Ruby, Legend of Korra, Sailor Moon, Owl House. The gang's all here. After that is another new fic, this one sitting at over 2,200,000 hits, almost at 2,300,000, and is Oh God, Not Again by Sarah1281. It's a Harry Potter fic, looks to have no romantic pairings here, so it's a gen fic. So maybe everything didn't work out perfectly for Harry. Still, most of his friends survived, he'd gotten married, and was about to become a father. If only he'd stayed away from the veil, he wouldn't have had to go back and do everything again. It's Harry Potter 2, Electric Boogaloo. And finally, to round out the top 20 fix with the most hits on AO3. At over 2,200,000 hits, it's All the Young Dudes, Sirius's Perspective by Roller Coaster Words. It's a fanfic 
of a fanfic. It's all the young dudes, but from Sirius's perspective. That's how you know your fic made it big, when people want to do fanfics of your fanfiction. All right, now let's search by bookmarks. This is gonna be interesting. Oh, or maybe not as interesting as I thought it'd be because All the Young Dudes is still number one. It's been bookmarked over 42,000 times. After that, we have Manacled again, being bookmarked over 28,000 times. Yesterday Upon the Stair again, this one being bookmarked almost 22,000 times. Salvage, oh, this one being bookmarked over 21,000 times. Draco Malfoy and the Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love, this one over 20,000 times, almost 21,000. Hero Club Civil Warfare again. This one is shy of 19,000 bookmarks. Dark Matter. This one's been bookmarked over 18,000 times. Running on Air. This is a new one. Okay, so this guy has been bookmarked 18,274 times and is another dreary fic. Draco Malfoy has been missing for three years. Harry is assigned the cold case and finds himself slowly falling in love with the memories he collects. I like the premise. After that, we've got Crimson River. This guy's been bookmarked almost 18,000 times. Survival is a Talent showed up again. This one's been bookmarked 17,670 times. Evitative is back at 17,558 bookmarks. Lily's Boy is also back at over 17,000 bookmarks. Paz Serena's here at just shy of 17,000 bookmarks. But this next one is new. It's been bookmarked 16,385 times and is a Teen Wolf fic. The first one we We've seen. It's called Stalinsky's Home for Wayward Wolves, and it's a Styles fic. Seriously, so many tropes. Tropes everywhere. Tropes coming out of your nose, there's so many. At least your puppies knock first, Styles snorts. Here I thought their alpha raised them to be well mannered. There's a sign. Derek responds stiffly. Styles, whose curiosity outweighs even his hardest of grudges, abandons his chilly facade of nonchalance in a heartbeat. He jumps right up and all but pushes Derek out of the way in his effort to get to the window. And sure enough, when he leans outside, there's a laminated strip of cardstock duct taped to the vinyl siding. Don't forget to knock, Styles gets cranky when we scare him. Or in which Styles Stalinsky moves to Beacon Hill for his junior year of high school and accidentally adopts a pack of teenage werewolves. We've got another new fic here. This one is at 15,747 bookmarks and is another dreary fic called Away Childish Things by Lettered. Harry gets de-aged, Malfoy has to help him. Oh. In Another Life is back. This one has 15,702 bookmarks. Oh damn, this one and Away Childish Things are close. Next up is another new fic. This one is at 15,370 bookmarks and is another dreary fic. This one also has Ronmini tagged and is Hermione Granger's Hogwarts Crammer for Delinquents on the Run by Waspabi. Waspabi, you're a wizard, Harry. It's easier to hear from a half giant when you're 11 rather than from some kids on a two platform when you're 17 and late for work. Oh God, not again, is here again at 15,155 bookmarks. Next up is another new fic. It's just over 15,000 bookmarks and it's You've Got the Antidote for Me by Kanda Kickass. It's another dreary fic with Hermione as a side pairing. When Harry Potter unintentionally severs their soul bond before it can fully form, Draco Malfoy resigns himself to a slow death and decides not to burden Harry with a soulmate. He's made it very clear he doesn't want. He's never been selfless before, but for Harry, he can try. Oh, and the angst and the wump go wild. Angst with a happy ending though, so there's that. And finally, to close the top 20 most bookmark fix on AO3, Sitting at 14,709 bookmarks currently, it's Complicated Creation by Elemental. It's a My Hero Academia fic with a platonic pairing of Eraserhead and Midoriya Izuku and Eraser Mike or Eraserhead and Present Mike. Midoriya Izuku is medically quirkless, not technically homeless, perpetually exhausted and doing his damn best despite it all. He also sees spirits, which might be cool if not for the fact that A, no one else does and B, they really don't like him very much. And C, he's pretty sure the heroes now think he's a villain working for the League. Aizawa Shota just wants to take down Overhaul, rescue Eri, and keep his students alive. Get some rest and find out how this Deku kid knows things he absolutely should not know about his personal life and the Shi Hasaiki case. 
unless Night Eye's right and the kid really is a villain. Deku seeing dead people in spirit seems to be a common premise here. And finally, let's go ahead and sort by comments. I got jump scared a bit. That first one is a glance fic. Oh wow, just glancing through all of these. There's a lot of new fix here. We've got strawberry and blueberry jam being the first one by Under the Weather. <laughs> Holy f almost 50,000 comments. Jesus Christ. These tags are wild. Phantom of the Opera AU, Camboy, Fire Witch Keith, Waterbender Lance. It's a collection of one shots, basically. After that is Carlos from Marvel and Zelda fans, Children of the Heroes by KR5. But why does it have 43,000 comments? What on earth is go, what the? What the heck? This is awesome. However, how does this story have 42,000 comments in a single thread? <laughs> Literally though, the thread got so long it turned into a sliver. Okay, it's not just me. What in God's name happened here? I'm still scrolling. <laughs> oh, are they role playing? I feel like I just stumbled upon an AO3 mystery. So it looks like KR5 and Marvel and Zelda fan, the author and the person they wrote it for, are just going back and forth, writing little fix to each other and role playing kind of. They had so many messages back and forth that it just, I've never seen anything like that before. Wow. The next big thing by Earl Grey T68 has over 43,000 comments. This is for the Inception fandom for Arthur and Eames. Oh my God. I remember there was this artist I really liked in the Deviant Art days who fell into the Inception fandom hard. There's celebrity judges on HGTV. That is hilarious. What a funny AU. I love that. The story is finished. AO3 just refuses to mark it as such. What's with all these glitches on AO3's end here? The comments are just breaking everything. Oh my god, this next one, Chained by War and Love by a whole collection of different authors is over 42,000 comments. It was updated fairly recently in June of 2024 and is for a whole bunch of different historical fandoms like the Tudors, Elizabeth, the Golden Age, the Medicis. This is fascinating. Never did I think that the fandoms with the most comments are freaking Inception and historical fiction right here. And Voltron. All the Young Dudes is in fifth place at almost 39,000 comments. And then there's 1796 Broadway by Rainproof and T. Berry Blue, which has over 37,000 comments and is for the MCU. It is a stony fic with Bruce and Natasha as a side pairing. Clint is a brony, what? Oh, it's a mailing list fic, that's funny. Happy Squid's Giving, I need to be straight. Oh, this next one is Wang Xian. Okay, it has over 36,000 comments. It's for MDZS, The Untamed, Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, lots of different names. It's called Meat Tired by Simple Soups and Apple Tarts. Have I read this one before? I don't think I have actually. What the f I'm sorry. Okay, for one, it's still ongoing. It was updated recently. Two, it's over a thousand chapters. A thousand and eighty-six at the moment. I am flabbergasted. Yeah, I guess there's a reason I haven't read this one before because I'm usually a one-shot reader when I need time to do stuff. And then we've got Crimson Rivers at 32,839 comments and Viridian the Green Guide at 29,307 comments. A thing of Vikings is a how to train your dragon fic. Let's go. It's by a thing of Vikings and currently has 27,947 comments. So almost 28,000. Oh, this is interesting. It's like how to train your dragon meets historical fiction. I mean, there's freaking Lady Macbeth here. What an interesting concept. And it's also been updated recently. If any of you have been looking for some really long fics to read, then here you go, enjoy your food. Great Googly Moogly. This one is a cookie run fic. It is at 27,813 comments and is called Only the Divine's Favorite Fall in Love by Arklin Vanilla. Clotted cream cookie and custard cookie, clotted cream cookie and light cream cookie, espresso cookie x madeline cookie, seaweed cookie, that's a thing? Oh wow, this is a dark fic too. And there's a chapter where sugar coated cookie tries to chop off his own hand because it's completely charred. charred cookie hands. It's heavy stuff. There's a scum villain fake here. Wait a minute. Okay, this is called The Grand Unified Theory of Shen Qingchou Qi Refining by Wu Jane Blonde. Mm, it takes some time the characters get together, but there is zero partner infidelity and very little angst. Ah, did not expect to find two 
done may fix here. 26,551 comments, nice. After that is If You Had This Time Again by DLS. It's a Marvel fic with Toki, Loney as the main pairing and has over 26,000 400 comments. Dearly Beloved is a victory fic from Yuri on Ice. It's at 25,787 comments. Oh, it's a megaverse. Entirely out of spite, it's a Genshin fic with Chili as the main pairing or Tartali. It's at over 25,500 comments. Oh, okay, okay. I've heard of this, but I was gonna read it and I never got around to it. So this might be the universe saying, hey, read this one. It's basically like Scum Villain, but Genshin edition. One for all and eight for the ninth. This one is a My Hero fic and the main pairing is Izuku and Ururaka. It has almost 25,000 comments. And then after that is Yesterday Upon the Stair, another My Hero fic we've seen multiple times by now. This one is at 23,601 comments. Unaccepted Apologies is the one after that. It's for the Hollywood Undead fandom and the pairing is Charlie Scene and J-Dog. Very out of my depth here, but this this one is at 23,235 comments. Is this a movie or a game? And then we have There's Blood on Your Lies by Hope Storyteller. This is a Pokemon fic and it has 23,198 comments. And finally, to round up the top 20 fanfics on AO3 with the most comments, it's The Weirwood Queen by Red Wolf, a Game of Thrones fanfic that's Sansa centric and has 22,839 comments, almost 23,000. That was a lot of fanfic and I learned a lot from that. That was really interesting. Have you read any of these fics that we went over? If so, what are your thoughts on them? Did they live up to the hype? Were you impressed and would you recommend them? Are there any other top AO3 categories that you'd like for me to cover? Like the longest fics on AO3 or the smuttiest fandoms on AO3? If so, then feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments. As always, if you'd like to see more fandom and fan culture-esque videos from yours truly, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. Watching. Have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>